everyone, this is Charles Walling from back again with another subscriber watch collection review. I have the honor of looking at and reviewing the collection of my subscriber, viewer, Gerald. I have something special for you guys this month. I have a real special one for you. Without further ado, let's start looking at the watches right now. Okay, here's Gerald's collection. Some watches you know just by sight, some you may not know. First, I want to go over Gerald's watches that he calls fun watches. Starting out with the Benares DVD Black Megalodon. And we have the Loom Tech Unknown Model. We have the Seiko SKX009. Those are his fun watches. And then we have a sentimental watch. This watch is the Seiko 6109 circa 1975. This is his grandfather's watch. Much respect to having this watch in your collection. And we have the Damasco DK10. I've been waiting to see someone with this watch. Next we have the Omega Speedmaster Professional 2254.50 and the Omega Speedmaster 3750.50. Yes, it is the man of the moon, but I'm not going to say, say it how you want me to say it. Next, we have the Rolex Submariner, Rolex Submariner No Date 114060. This is his daily wearer, and it's currently on a black leather strap. Next up, we have the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean Chronograph in titanium. This watch brings a lot of color to his collection, and he also explains that this is his favorite chronograph watch. This watch is a very large watch, and it fits him, but it doesn't go well with a dress wear. It doesn't fit under the sleeve very well. Okay, let's go with some very special watches to Gerald. This is the Breguet Big Date Marine. And the reference number is 5817ST. This is his first Holt horology piece. And then this Rolex GMT Master 2 Two-Toned is his first Rolex watch. Up next, we have some really wonderful watches the glass huta original Panam panomatic lunar this is my favorite watch of his collection this is a oh I, I, I don't want to go too deep into it but this is a wonderful watch then we have the iwc reference number 3227-01 the engineer this is gerald's favorite watch and Gerald also likes the Gerald Genta design and integrated bracelet. And he himself is an engineer. Lastly, we have the, the Lecoutre, not the Jeje Lecoutre, but this is prior to Jeje, the vintage Memovox with date. This is actually a mechanical alarm watch. Very interesting choice, and it is a awesome choice for horological street cred to have a vintage watch such as this. Now, I said wow before this is this is a spectacular spectacular um, collection. I don't know where to I, I don't know how to tell this guy what watches he needs and or how how do I tell him that his his uh Collection's not perfect. How do I tell them that? Oh, like just like this. For logical significance, number one, 25 points. Yes, the full 25 points. We know those watches from a distance. They're extremely iconic. And then having that Jeje uh, Lecoutre, or the Lecoutre, even better, uh, alarm watch. Man, that's, that's nuts. It's nuts and awesome at the same time. That is an absolute collector's item, as we know, and it is 
it's showing that he he is willing to go all over the place to look for a great watch and and a watch that has some true value to it, even beyond uh, the number value of how much it's worth. Test of time. Come on. You don't even have to do this. 25 points. Hey, almost every one of those watches are super iconic that he can resell. That's going to look diff look just as good and won't look too crazy or be significant later on 20, 30, 40 years from now. They absolutely will. No question. 25 points. Okay. Let's go with variety. This is one of the only times he's really going to lose some significant points. He's going to get 24 points out of 25. Yeah. <laughs> variety. I only have to not, I mean, it's really, I'm telling you, I'm splitting hairs like crazy. And to get, to lose one point, is, that's not a big deal. But having most of the color scheme being black, gray, or white. Variety, uh, not a, le a lot of variances of different uh, uh, textures, uh, variances of different uh, materials used. I didn't see any ceramic used or anything like that. Again, you're, we're splitting hairs. Once you get in the 20 level, you, you, <laughs> you are doing really well. If I could say he needs to do better in something, something, I would say variety, and again, he's losing one point for variety. Uh, I don't know. He does have that uh, to change things up a lot, especially with color. Um, he has that um, Omega Planet Ocean chronograph that brings a little color to it. But to get the full 25 points, you need a little bit more. Literally a little bit. Last thing we have, age. Age is the last thing. 52, he is still overachieving. This is an absolute overachievement. I can't give, I don't, well, I can, I mean, it's my rules, it's my channel, but I don't give extra points. I don't give extra credit. If I could, he would have maybe 103 or something. But here, under age, well above, like I said, 52, if I didn't say already, 52 years old is exactly where you're supposed to be. And this is what I really want to tell some, tell you out there, you guys that are really into this, but you, you feel that you're sitting on the sideline, you feel that you're not in the game, you feel that, ah, I never get to this point. It what didn't happen overnight, guys. He didn't just get these overnight. He waited a, a, quite a while to be able to pull the trigger to get these uh, watches. He explained to me that he did not just get in the game. He, he was looking on the sideline like many people waiting to get in the game. But from what I can tell, he was just sitting, sitting, waiting, reading, uh, educating himself about what would be the proper uh, watches to get and he got the right ones. So don't put any pressure on yourself when you see this wonderful collection and maybe you're older than him or maybe you're just uh, a few years younger than him and your collection looks nothing like that. This collection is absolutely rare. Super duper rare. And the, the thing is, you really have to look. It's not pure money. Did you, do you see the different variety of watches that he goes through? He has watches on a, a, a lower level all the way up to the higher level. He wants a good watch, and he appears to do research before he buys watches also. So that is why it is so admirable. I have so much, much admiration for him, for this collection, and that why he is, is going to receive the highest points I've given for these reviews. He's going to get 99, almost 100. Almost 100. And I, again, how do I tell a person who has almost 100 what, what, can he, what he can do to improve his collection? I don't know. 
So here are my suggestions to improve his collection. First off, he explained to me that he had some watches in mind, that, and I do agree with one of them, a Zenith um, El Primero, but he should get the Zenith. El Primero, 1969, limited edition, 100, 150th anniversary. That watch is what he should get. No other, um, of course if he does, but no other Zenith El Primero will do. I pers I, that's what I believe. That's just my opinion. But he, he really likes the uh, El Primero, so that is why I really considered that. Oh, not a bad idea, but this one being a limited edition, something that it's not, he doesn't have any limited edition pieces, though his pieces aren't just running the mill, just pull off the shelf, watch. You're, you're, he's got quite a few absolutely lovely pieces as we already seen. But um, the El Primero would be a great idea. Now I made that choice with the El Primero because that was his suggestion. Let me go completely by myself without his suggestions. And this, these two watches that I suggest are extremely expensive. They're extremely expensive and they, they may require another 10, 20 years to acquire because how, of how expensive they are. And I wouldn't suggest getting rid of any watch to get them. I wouldn't suggest that at all. The reason being is collection is pretty much complete. Like, what do you need to do? You Honestly, he doesn't need to buy another watch. But if he's going to get another watch, he needs to go all out. He needs to have a watch on his wrist that makes you say, whoa, I've never seen one of those in person. I've only read about, I've only seen online. Those are the type of watches he needs to have in this collection right now. No other watch, it doesn't matter how nice of a watch he can get. It's like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, I've seen that in the store. I've, he needs to have watches that people rarely even seen. Bridge. My first suggestion is a corn golden bridge. Now, quite a few people have seen it, but have you seen it? Well, have you seen it in real life? Have you seen it in person? It is magnificent. I had the pleasure of holding one in my hand. That's the closest I'll probably ever get to having that watch. I was holding it in my hand, and I was just—it was absolutely magical. So beautiful, and that is something that he needs to have to make his damn near perfect collection perfect. He has to have something that makes a person say, wow. Now how about this watch? Something absolutely spectacular. Again, another one of those watches that people have seen online, in magazines, but maybe never seen actually in real life, in person, at least not on Freak, but not just the Freak, the Blue Phantom. This one will finish out any collection and just like this is the absolute not just the cherry on top the whipped cream the cherry and the uh, nuts everything on top perfect Sunday magical because what else is there to get he has everything he does he has almost everything he has a check in the box and every thought process every situation he has a check in the box besides a watch that make you say Wow. Really, just like that. No words. That's what he needs to have in his collection. That freak will actually make you do that. You don't need another watch, Gerald. You don't need another watch. But if you're going to get another watch, you better make it big.